Mr. Paul, who's chairman of the Monetary Policy <laughs> Subcommittee. I th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me just uh, say a word about the deficit. Uh, the spending and the deficit was a concern of mine in the, in the early 70s because I foresaw that uh, after the breakdown of the Bretton Woods that we would have endless spending, endless deficits, endless financial bubbles, and, and we've had that. As to whether or not we have military Keynesianism, we do. And I reject that as well as I reject domestic monetary uh, economic Keynesianism. And until we put the two together and reject them, we're going to continue with these uh, problems. But the reason why I don't think it's a Federal Reserve uh, uh, you know, uh, job to lecture the Congress, even though I agree Congress is at fault. They spend too much money. And Congress at times will say the Fed's at fault. But you know, the Congress and the Fed are symbiotic. They have a symbiotic relationship because the Fed, the, the Congress spends, and they know there's a moral hazard involved here because they know that if, if interest rates goes up, the Fed accommodates them. So the Fed really facilitates this spending. And until we realize this, so uh, I think the Fed is involved with our deficit and encourages as well as the Congress. But it is true. Congress's initial responsibility ought to be just cut the spending uh, because this deficit is exploding. Inflation is exploding. And interest rates are going to go up. So we're going to have one heck of a problem here in the near future. But I, I want to ask a question dealing with monetary policy, because it used to be that was the key to this hearing. T today, it's economic uh, uh, you know, management, uh, central economic planning, and, and everything's up for grabs. But monetary policy, uh, of course, it was stated that the job of the Fed is to give us stable prices and full employment. But if you look at over the last three or four decades, there's nothing stable about it. And look at unemployment today. If we were honest with ourselves, if we look at all the people who no longer look for work, it's over 20%. And to pretend that it's going down and everything is rosy, I think it, we're deceiving ourselves to think that is happening. So I would say it's a total failure. And one of the reasons I want to, a reason I'd like to suggest and get your comments on is how can you manage monetary policy, which means to manage the dollar, if we don't have a definition of a dollar. I can't find in the code define what a dollar is or a Federal Reserve note, and everybody knows a Federal Reserve note is a dollar. You create a note, which is a promise to pay, and that's another dollar. So the more debt you have, the more dollars you have. But if, I'd like to know if you know whether there's a definition of a dollar and when it became known that a dollar was a Federal Reserve note. I want a definition of money. That seems to be the real job. We want a measurement of value. And this is the reason that I believe that uh, uh, we made a big mistake by de declaring fiat money, paper money, would be our measurement of value. There's no way to maintain, uh, you know, a, a, an interested, uh, you, you know, a, a, a true measurement of this. You know, if you look at what the stock market, if you bought the stock market in the year 2000, uh, the index, it would, have, uh, it would have taken 44 ounces of gold. In 1980, it would have taken 1.5 ounces of gold. Today, it's back down to eight ounces. So in true value, the stock market's in a crash. And you say, oh no, uh, gold is not money. And you and I will have a disagreement on whether gold is money or not. But the Fed holds gold, the Treasury holds gold, central banks hold gold, and it, my opinion doesn't matter either because it's, it's history. It's the marketplace. Gold is the true long-term measurement of value. So how can you run your operation and def without a definition of the dollar? And what is your definition of a dollar? You raised some important points, uh, Congressman. Um, our mandate is uh, maximum employment and price stability. My definition of the dollar is what it can buy. Consumers don't want to buy gold. They want to buy food and gasoline and clothes and, and all the other things that uh, are in the consumer basket. And it's the buying power of the dollar in terms of those goods and services that is what is important, and that's what I call price stability. The fact is that uh, you know after the 1970s, where you're correct, there was a lot of instability and inflation was very high. Since uh, Chairman Volcker in the early 80s, and I know you have uh, talked about your relationship with him, uh, brought inflation down, that inflation in the United States has been uh, low and stable uh, around 2% for some time. And in fact, it's been 2% over the last five years, despite everything else that's been going on. Um, moreover, the, in terms of uh, the unemployment uh, part of the mandate, it's certainly true unemployment is unsatisfactory now. My own view is that that's largely due to the uh, financial crisis, which in turn 
uh, had a lot to do with uh, problems in both the private markets and in the supervisory and regulatory regime. But even uh, but putting that aside, over the period uh, last 25 years or so, the stability of unemployment has been much greater than it was in previous decades. So it, it, there has been improvement. 